Okay, this is our annual all committees meeting that we started a number of years ago and we found it very helpful um, to allow committees to communicate with one another and certainly to communicate with us and, and to give the residents an idea of all the hard work that's done by our committees. Um, and again, these are, you're all volunteers and it, it's what helps the town run. Uh, I, I, I don't think a lot of people realize the amount of work that goes into uh, all the committees, boards, commissions we have here in town. Uh, and, and certainly uh, this meeting will give people an idea of that, give our residents an idea of that. Certainly help us communicate better with, with one, among, one another among the committees and certainly among the committees and the, and the board. Um, in the past, what we've done, we've just done a three or four minute presentation of what we've done in the past year, um, what we're working on now, and what the plans are for the future. Um, very high level, not a lot of detail, but to help everybody know what, what goes on. So why don't we start over here with Ron. Go for it, Ron. All right, hi, Lee. Um, last year we Graveled Graves Road, parts of Maine Poland Road. We paved just the spring East Guinea Road and South Ashfield and Williamsburg Road, um, along with all the other maintenance that we do on the roads. Coming up, we're planning on doing Hoosick Road, Matthews Road, and Cemetery Hill, Baptist Hill, Upper Baptist, and hopefully we'll have some good luck with Delabar with uh, FEMA on what they what we proposed to them, um, and then just our general maintenance of the roads. Um, our salt shed is now completely done, back together better than it was, so we should be in good shape for the winter. Good. Good. Okay. Along with Sheldon Falls Road and the resurface of section of Sheldon Falls Road. Too. Yeah, we put a um, shim coat on it to on that one real bad spot. That and um, Saban Road. Just, just to let you know, uh, I'm on the MMA board and we're working very hard to get uh, multi-year um, chapter 90 funds so that we have better planning uh, and we're looking for instead of 200 million a year we're pushing for 300 million a year so hopefully um, if the revenues of the state um, start building up the way they should be okay uh, that's that's a high priority for the governor and lieutenant governor is to get um, that that chapter 90 funding up to the 300 million and also multi-year so we, we might go three to five years on, on things like that that's awesome so that that'll yeah. help tremendously yeah. unbelievable mm -hmm. thank you carl carl nelke uh board of health um pretty, pretty much uh do the same stuff no big um no big projects uh, we take care of we run the uh, transfer station uh, we also look after the health of the people in the town. We inspect all places that serve food or B and B's, um, and uh, summer camps. We also inspect the summer camps, and we do um, a lot of Title Five work, uh, um, Title Five inspections, and perk tests and stuff like that. So um, it's a five-person board, and uh, we're all pretty busy with you know taking care of different phases of what we do. Um, get together twice a month and uh, you know, kind of touch base on, on what's going on. Mm -hmm. How's our paper compactor working out? Very good, good. very good. It was, it was, it was a definite, um, definite plus to, to put it in. Um, we're saving a lot of money by, by making heavier holes, less holes. We, you know, we still, the tonnage works out the same, but we, we pay Every time the truck picks up, we pay a certain amount for that, so mm. we're not picking up as often now. Right. And that's where we're saving money. Right. Thanks, Carl. Go ahead. 
Uh, Roy Cohn, the Finance Committee. I don't see anybody else here from there. Um, this is a tough committee at times. Um, not that any of them aren't. Um, we, we've traditionally been six members and we are going to be on the uh, ballot, on the, uh, on the uh, warrant. warrant for the uh, special meeting. Uh, about seeing to reduce to five uh, with the hope that there can be more decisive, I guess, uh, uh, direction from the committee. But that said, uh, I think that so last year um, was we're, we're all, we are working, I'd say, as a whole for greater understanding of the town budget. Um, trying to get a better appreciation for the nuances, uh, where things come from, where they go. Um, there are always little changes that happen every year that we have to stay on top of. Um, we are always cognizant of the tax rate and, their, and the effect on an average or median house in the town. Uh, I would say we're never uh, anxious to just spend money. We like to understand where, where and why the money is being requested to be spent. Um, and let me perhaps finish. Uh, this year, I th last year we kind of um, started approaching this, uh, a greater understanding of the school budget. Traditionally that budget was sort of left to, on its own where they would just uh, prepare their budget and we'd basically approve it with a few questions. And I think this year we're going to be looking for, it's not that we want to put our thumb or our management on the school, you know, on the contrary, we just want a greater understanding so that we can uh, explain it to people when they ask us and also see, go after areas that don't make sense. And so I would say that that's, um, uh, that's an area that uh, we're going to concentrate on this, this year. And uh, certainly, yeah, so I think I'm... So yeah, cer certainly the Finance Committee has had a problem with, with achieving quorums at meetings in, in, in the recent past. Um, we, some problems, yeah, uh, yes. Right, with, with six mem members, you need four members to have a quorum. That's correct. We reduce that to five, five. and you only need three. three. So that, that should help you out quite a bit in terms of, of participation. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's go to the back. Let's go to Murph. Okay, well, I didn't actually get appointed EMD until uh, the period everybody's discussing was over. And uh, I hope this is the first of many years that I'll be able to come to this meeting and not have anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Mark. Give us, give us something here. Well, I mean, I was around for the uh, for the tornado. That was kind of my... And, and you did an excellent oh, job, my, by the yes. way. Well... You did an excellent uh, job. I was at a Dr. John concert when we got the word. <laughs> uh, listening to I was in the right place, must have been the wrong time. Uh, <laughs> So that worked out. Uh, that was that was a good way to learn the best. Uh, got through that. We did okay. Uh, too many meetings afterwards, uh, but other than that, I, I think everything went pretty smoothly and continues to do so. That's that's a scar that's going to take a long, long time to heal. Uh, but I think everybody's I, I, don't, I think everybody's working together and everything's going pretty well. Great. Thank you, Marvin. <clears throat> Janet. I'm Janet Chase. I'm chairman of the Open Space Committee. Um, this past year, and, and actually just completed uh, year one of an invasive plant removal project on what was formerly called the Rose Field, and there's been a couple of committees have agreed to call it the South River Meadow after much discussion with the other committee that was formed to make recommendations or manage that or whatever. Anyway, so we're calling it the South River Meadow. Everybody knows what we're talking about. It's the 11 acre field that's now in hay and, and the, I think quite successfully and it had the big river restoration 
uh, uh, swale cut out for to reduce flooding. For, uh, um, and we noticed over time that all the edges are just completely overtaken with the invasives. Community preservation and town meeting approved the three-year uh, grant funds to um, have the invasives professionally um, cut and treated for a three-year project, and that just completed, uh, completed the first year. It had to be delayed because the honeybees were still working. It was delayed <laughs> a few times for them to finally leave with this warmer weather. Um, and so far, it looks good. We will see if anybody notices it. You'll see uh, lots of dead, dying uh, vines, mostly bittersweet vines, and that's the goal, and they will eventually, because they're going to die, they're going to just fall and, and look better after they drop and are gone, but that's the, uh, that's the, the, this is year one and two more years. Um, and, um, and we just completed, Michelle's going to talk about the silk grass. Yeah, project. We, we just completed the fourth year of the um, Japanese stilt grass control project, which is rather being, than being located in one place, is on all the town roads where we found it. Um, and that work has been going on for about eight years now. Um, but <coughs> this funding from town meeting 2013, so this is the fourth year that we'll use that money up. So we will be looking for funds to continue the project because even though we've been very successful in controlling and even knocking back this stuff, it has a 10-year um, life for the seeds. They will germinate for as long as 10 years. So we're still waiting to expire the seed bank. Last year, we had a great year because of the drought, <laughs> and we were very excited thinking, oh, we made this huge progress. And then this year, a whole lot of it sprouted. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to think positive and say, that seed will never sprout again. <laughs> and uh, as long as we keep mm -hmm. after it, we, it's worth doing. Um, like most of these invasive plant control things, we're gonna, you're not going to eradicate stuff. It's going to keep moving in. We're going to have to keep after it. So um, one of the things Open Space Committee hopes to start working on is a more comprehensive plan for this kind of work. Um, and uh, that's about it for this and, whole and, and we are going to be making a, a, a recommendation that may be a little older one, but we have a, a, a forum and maybe with a, a planning board uh, like we did for one of these, and invite others in because the still grass, because it should have some co most of this is on private property, and where we can see it along the roadside, they get the permission. Well, it starts um, along the roadside. Yeah, and how far in it goes. But there have been a number of people, a number of homeowners who just don't want to know and don't care. And um, I mean, this is just an issue beyond you know mm -hmm. us making recommendations. And we're not going to have Michelle to spend all her volunteer time, you know, trying to take care of it. I mean, it's not it's not our problem. It's a town problem. For those of you who don't know or think that maybe this is a a waste of money, the still grass <coughs> can completely take over. We've seen pictures from other places. It forms a huge mat in the in the forest and the understory, and it kills nothing else can grow underneath. So that's why it is, we're trying to keep that from happening widespread. Great. Thank you, Jan, and thanks, Michelle. Bryce? I'd like to introduce Peter Martin. Oh, we know Chair, Peter. Chair, 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 we know Peter. He'll, he'll speak for us. <laughs> uh, the last year what we completed is uh, the project for the Green Energy Grant to uh, air seal and insulate this building. Mm -hmm. Um, right now, we're waiting on a resolution between the contractor and them not meeting one of the criteria from the engineer. The inspector from the COG has gotten involved and has met and will get resolved. It just hasn't happened yet. Uh, we also applied and received a MEDA grant, which allowed us to go out and and beginning some work on designing a solar field that hopefully will be able to provide uh, at least 90% of municipal electric 
for the community. We went on and uh, engaged PB Squared to essentially design uh, a system and we have received a one-line drawing from them. The next step would be to do a further engineering design for a complete uh, system. We're still working on layout for the parcel. We need to get permission to use the parcel. There, this is all in process. And we come. We are now just waiting to work with the CONCOM to get their uh, approval and sign off this, and uh, working on developing an RFP for for the project itself. Looking ahead, uh, we're looking at using state uh, programs for reducing and converting street lights. In, the, in town to LEDs and removing a good number of them that are just superfluous that have really no purpose where they are. Looking at energy upgrades or an audit for both the town garage and the school uh, and with our programs now that we're going to be able to avail ourselves to, to look at that. Hopefully this spring we will have spent our previous green uh, communities grant will apply for another grant to, to move on to address the other building from town. At uh, the MMA board meeting um, <coughs> a couple of weeks ago, the Lieutenant Governor is very anxious to see that second round of green community grants come out. So as soon as we can get through the first grant, they're ready to give us another one. So or they, I know that historically they've always been wanting to see money move to the western part of the state because they get grief all the time if it doesn't happen here. But I think if we apply, we'll get it. How, how is Solarize Conway coming? It was quite successful, and I'll defer to, to, to the Bryce C that he was the coach, but. It is, uh, it's still in process. Um, they are still um, uh, doing, put, installing some of the systems, um, but it's been very well received. I, was, I think of all the three towns, I think all three towns had above uh, expectations as far as uh, people coming in and uh, availing themselves of it. So I think it's been a very successful program. Um, I think it also has sort of spread out uh, to neighbors and all because I keep seeing more um, solar installations popping up. So I think that uh, it's sort of a, have a seed effect and it keeps growing. And uh, I think you're going to continue to see this to grow. How many residents do we have in the program? Oh, uh, it's 70. Seven. That's that's outstanding. Yeah, that's, that's really that's outstanding. At seventy homeowners. Yeah. Yeah. The, the the energy committee over the last couple of years has done an outstanding job, and well, you know you. primarily because of Bryce and and Peter, you guys have done a thank great you. job. Thank you. Uh, Dana, you're up. Uh, Dana Lucio, capital improvement program. Um, we haven't actually done a whole lot uh, since the acquisition of, of the fire truck. Um, we're working with, I hate when that happens, Tom, help me out. Who is the gentleman from the state? Oh, Joe Markarian. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and we've laid out uh, long-range requirements for some of the different departments in terms of capital requirements. Uh, Joe has given us some guidelines about free cash mm -hmm. as a percent of the, of the total funds. Uh, he felt uh, and kind of demonstrated with pretty good logic that we should probably borrow more money than spending capital amounts when we acquire these things. Uh, that would make the state happier. Uh, and going forward, uh, I think our next big project, uh, I understand that, Ronnie, you've got some information on bridges that we're going to have to start thinking about mm -hmm. planning for bridge repairs, replacements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joe Markarian, uh, work, who works for the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, is involved with us with long-range planning, and that's part of the community compact, which has been uh, 
touted by the Baker Polito administration. Uh, we were involved in the long range planning aspect as well as the IT aspect. And that seems to be working out very well. Well, well it's, it's a huge benefit because, you know, as average citizens, we don't have the expertise for the mm -hmm. types of guidelines that he's giving us and laying down. And, and I think it prevents uh, a lot of bad decisions from being made or even <coughs> no decisions. Mm -hmm. So Joe has been a huge help. And Tom has been a big help, too. Mm -hmm. And certainly at the sort of this fiscal year, you, your committee gave us some very good guidelines moving forward. And we thank you for that. Peter. Yes. Uh, oh, behind me. Behind me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> too, many, too many Peters. <laughs> yeah. um, Pete Zale. I'm uh, chairman of the uh, Community Preservation Committee. And I'm uh, acting chair at the moment of the... Uh, Conservation Commission in decades absence. So starting with the Conservation Commission, we did about 25 plus requests for determinations and notice of intents this uh, in the past fiscal year. And we probably did twice that many building permit reviews. Um, most of the RDAs and the NOIs were uh, solar to uh, back up what the Energy Commission really said. Uh, basically pretty painless. Um, we, we've tried very hard to be as accommodating as we can to people's needs. We, we convinced the DEP to make a number of exceptions um, to the uh, Defense Protections Act and the Riverfront Act. Uh, and I mean, at the moment, I think there's one project left in Conway that's it's having a bit of a problem satisfying requirements, but other than that, they're all good and my solar array is up and running. But <laughs> 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 Lucky you. <laughs> uh, yeah. but a lot this, I mean, really, a lot of praise for Tarico. They, they did a good job. Glad to hear it. Um, so moving on to the CPC, uh, in the past fiscal year we spent 300 bucks to join the community preservation coalition uh spent a couple of thousand dollars in still grass control this was through june 30th um nothing really on community housing and 96,470 on the floodplain south river uh, project so at the moment we have an administrative account, administrative expense account of about 26,801, an open space account balance of about 56,670, an historic preservation balance of about 13,000, and a community housing balance of about 59,670, and an unreserved fund of about 346,587. Mm -hmm. So all told, the community preservation funds available to Conway are about $573,695.23, in <laughs> which will pay for a nice vacation for me sometime. <laughs> uh, so far in this fiscal year, I think we've spent about eighteen four dollars on a feasibility study for senior housing. Um, as of August 22nd, we hadn't spent any of the 9,200. We passed for invasive species control, but I believe that that's pretty much done for this year. So. Well, you're just going to get the bill. <laughs> yeah, we've yeah. got the first bill. So that has been dispersed. And we haven't spent, uh, we haven't dispersed or, or, or released the $60,000 on the uh, Zog Chen uh, community rehabilitation. And there are a couple of problems involved with that. Um, one of which is that there's a pending suit in the uh, Supreme Judicial Court, which has been argued and will be decided, we believe, at least uh, the coalition believes, will be decided before the end of the year. But it seems at the moment, to me at least, uh, somewhat questionable to release $60,000 and then find out it's unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the second problem we have is uh, that historic preservation restrictions require adherence to the Secretary of the Interior's federal guidelines on historic preservation. Uh, and it's part of CMR. Mm -hmm. Nothing I can do about it. Nobody in town wants to do it. So what I'm trying to do at the moment is find an outside consultant that we can pay out of that $24,000, $26,000 we have administrative expenses to oversee that kind of oversight, basically. Okay. Um, that's moving slowly. Yeah. I mean, at this point, I'm, I'm kind of dragging my feet, to be honest with you, on this, because I want everything to be resolved. Mm -hmm. I've talked to the uh, DOR, I've talked to the Historic Commission of the state, or the Commonwealth, and both of them have both basically said, until you get a decision out of the SJC, yeah. Yeah. it's kind of silly. Plus, there's only one guy at the Historic Commission who, re who reviews histor uh, historic preservation grant or restrictions, and he apparently has a great deal of leave time. And uh, he's, he's very busy, so I, yeah, he's really busy. <coughs> but that's where we are. Great. Thank you. Thank you, so Peter. The, question, oh, go ahead, is the clarification, so the lawsuit, is this about, um, about whether community preservation money can be used by religious organizations? Is that the, is that the issue that's being... There's, there's a uh, provision in the Mass Constitution, or maybe in the... CMR, I don't, I'm not quite sure exactly which. It talks about favoring a government favoring a specific religion. And so a, a lawsuit has been filed by an organization out of Wisconsin against the town of Acton, who, who granted two <coughs> preservation grants to restore historic churches. Um, and until that's settled, we don't know. Um, you know, I mean, my personal opinion in the historic building and the historic building, I don't think we're showing any preference for any one religion here. Uh, I mean, we did, we did a grant for the UCC um, that was <clears throat> kind of controversial, or it turned out to be rather controversial, and they're not trying to pay us back. Um, and, you know, we saw no reason not to put question in front of the town for the dog gentry. Uh, and I'm sure St. Mark's came up to us, you know, so we, we, we welcomed that discussion. Uh, but it, the way it is, is the way it is. And uh, so, just wait. Just Sounds prudent to wait and see. Go ahead, Dan. percentage of uh, should the state refund the matching funds last year? Uh, it keeps getting smaller, um, and, and part, part of that problem is that Boston, Pittsfield, and Worcester joined the group. That will do it. Yeah, and so all of a sudden the, the pool of available money uh, shrank. Hang on a second, I've got a, uh, I've got a revenue statement here. And sales are down too. Yeah, so we, we got... 75,356 out of um, basically the residents of the town off their real estate taxes. The state gave us 83,289. We earned $8,000 in interest, so we had a total income in fiscal year 2017 of 166,860, 853, 75. So the state gave us more money than we Yes. Because they're matching the prior year. Okay. Yeah. They, yeah. I mean, the whole the thing is, is, on the is prior year. really complicated. So you don't really know what the matching funds for year and year are? Well, we do after we get them. <laughs> that's, that's what it comes down to. We don't know what we're going to get. There are three, you can get it. There are three rounds of funding. Okay. And so have we got the money for 2016? Uh, fiscal 2017, the one that ended June 30th of this okay. year, um, the first round for this fiscal year, which is 2018, has yet to be received. Okay, so let's back up to 17. Do we know what percentage of the funds that were collected from the town in 2017, fiscal 2017, what percentage of that did the state match? 
The state, the state, because we're at three percent, is supposed to match a hundred percent. Well, they never have, as far as well. No, sure they have. They're supposed to match a hundred percent. This year, they're going to have a problem matching that hundred percent. So, but we don't know what it's going to be in fiscal eighteen. Okay. So yeah. let's back up and my question. So it was a hundred. It was over a hundred percent. It was over 100 percent. Mm -hmm. Dollar, dollar for dollar. Dollar for yes. well, I guess I don't understand that. Why would they pay us more than 100 percent if they're committed to 100 percent? Let, let's let's call it 100 percent, and we're all set. <laughs> don't worry about it, Dan. Don't lose sleep over this. The Commonwealth works in a serious way. We're not, we're not going to send it back, Dan. The whole purpose of going to 3% was to get a 100% matching fund. That's right. And we did that. We got that. This one time, I guess, because that's news to me. We, we got that, and but this year, I can assure you, it's not going to be 100%. Yeah, it's a year-by-year -year battle. It, it depends on what the state's income is. But they're supposed to give us 100% based on our 3% tax. That's the reason we, we upped it. Joe, are you representing the sewer rats? I'm here for the <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, about this time last year, we worked, went out to bid for uh, to finish up our preliminary engineering and do final design on the wastewater system. Um, we ended up going to town meeting and we received 16000 for the preliminary uh, design work. We ended up hiring Ty and Vaughn. And then we had to work around the uh, Hayfield mowing, the 250th, and Rob's schedule with the excavator. But finally, on July 11th, we were able to get in there and tear the place up. <laughs> and we dug, um, I think, four or five deep holes. Five? Yeah, one we didn't count, I guess. Right. It was too wet. And then I think we dug three perk holes, I think that's correct. Um, all the perk tests passed. Groundwater was visible at about eight feet, I think, was it? Some seven to eight feet? No, it was, it was shallow. I mean, the actual water that was. Oh, like the actual water. We did actually estimated. find water in. But the estimated high water table was closer to 30 yeah. inches. It was closer to four feet. But at some point, the water had been about four feet around, I guess, 40 something inches. But then we actually found there was apparently a water flow under the parcel from the river. There seems to be a layer of gravel about seven or eight feet down, mm -hmm. I guess, and the water was flowing. Mm -hmm. When we dug a hole, the water was coming from the riverside, mm -hmm. which I guess is not necessarily bad. Uh, as long as you have five feet, is it five feet we needed? Five feet of separation. Yeah, five feet of separation. Mm -hmm. um, so the engineers are working on it. We've spent $4,800 of the 16. Uh, I'm hoping we'll have a report later this year Same or one, next year. Over. River. And at that point, we would plan to survey the residents, primarily in the downtown, and get a sense of what their participation rate will be. I hope they'll be back to town meeting. Great, great. Mary, you and Joe in succession will be too much, so I'm going to go back to Jason. <laughs> I can be oh, really easy talking about me or you. <laughs> no, we're it's the, it's the duo. I think it's, it's both. Duo. It's too much. I think it's both. Uh, Jason our Parks, Recreation, and Trails. Um, I'll have very little perspective on anything because I came onto this committee a year ago and my second meeting I was voted chairman, but I wasn't actually there to be voted <laughs> in. So That's what happens when you don't attend <laughs> meetings. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now i got to teach everybody else that lesson. But <laughs> so um, it, basically it's been a, a year of transition. There's been a lot of transition as far as the people who are on the committee. Uh, a lot of people who've been around for a while have left and we're sort of playing catch up. Um, there was also the transition of Conway Youth Sports coming under the umbrella of uh, PRT. Um, and just sort of everybody trying to figure out where we want to go. And that's the big project that we have coming up is to really define what this committee's role is within the town, and it's going to re rely on some outreach to some other people as well, and, and try and draw lines and and figure out where we cross borders and how we can help each other out, and, and making sure that the things that fall under our purview are well taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, there were no major 
things that went on. Um, we've been trying to improve equipment around town, um, things like that. And there's some stuff coming up this, in this fiscal year that we're going to be doing as well that people will notice with new ventures for the ball fields and things like that. Um, I have to, or I'll get in trouble because this is being recorded. Uh, the, the youth sports folks would like me to make sure that we thank Jan for all of her help in getting the, um, all the youth sports registrations as an online registration and an online pay system, which... Yes, Jan Warner. Yes, Warner. yes thank you. Yes. Um, and that was really big. For them, the whole registration process is kind of a a hit or miss proposal of people getting things in on time and making sure that we've got everybody there and by making it um, an electronic process uh, according to Julie Petty uh, we had 100% electronic registration this year in the first year that it was in separate wow, and, that, and we didn't have late uh, people and things like that so it, it worked out really well so I think that the absorption of that into into Parks and Rec has gone very smoothly. Um, we are looking at coming up in this year, uh, John Efron leaving, and we're going to try and sort of restructure the management of um, youth sports into sort of two roles, one who's the overall sports director and then an administrative person, and try and get people to commit for, you know, a few years at a time to do that so that we have continuity and can try and bring in the next generation of people because it's very much tied to, uh, you know, whose who's kids are in, in youth sports at any given time. I'm, I'm on my second pass through, so I'm in deja vu, but, um, you know, that's really the hardest part is, is understanding that these people are volunteering, but they're also volunteering within a window of time where it's appropriate for their lives. And so doing that is, is really um, part of building out how youth sports becomes part of uh, Parks and Rec and Trails. And then looking at, again, what our role is in town and then the other resources that are sort of under our, under our purview and talking to other uh, departments and committees in town about where we can reap benefits of that and make it more accessible and more usable for for people in town. Right, right. Uh, the issues at the ball field have basically been resolved. To the best of my knowledge, I mean, mostly that seems to be on on you folks up there at the mm -hmm. at the big table. Um, there are, I know, some issues that are still floating out there as far as financial resolution for dealing with some but of most issues. of the major ones have been resolved. But it, it seems like, yeah, most of the major ones have been resolved. Um, John Heffernan did a great job with the ball field and getting some folks from Dewfield Academy to come in and give us some consultation and some building out. There's, you know, it's one of those things that is always going to depend on sort of the annual maintenance of those things and, you know, soil settles. So how do you make sure that we've got it built and draining in the right directions and you know what's that going to cost and that's something we're going to learn over time we don't sure. know entirely how this field's going to react right now but things are a lot better than they were um you know we don't have to worry so much about a puddle down the entire third baseline and things like that so good good thanks jason chief uh we just keep doing what we do um, <laughs> nice and quiet around town uh, not as quiet as we'd like. Uh, if you haven't heard, we've had a rash of B&Es as well as Ashfield and some of the other hill towns. Um, presumably drug related things where people are looking for some quick cash. I will say that none of the breaks so far that we know of have been forced entries, so there's people that are leaving their houses home off. People are being opportunistic and walking in when nobody's home. So I encourage people to do lock their houses up when they're not home. Is this, this happening mostly along the main roads? No, mostly on the secondary roads. Mostly roads. on the secondary roads. In okay. most all the towns of the center. So it's not on the main travel place. Maybe we should put something on the, the website about people locking up. Yeah, yeah. Tom. 
other than that, you know, we continue to do the school safety monitoring. Uh, we just had a lockdown drill at our school as well as Whaley's Elementary and Deerfield Elementary on Friday. So that's a big part of what we do now. How, how often do we do a lockdown drill? We do them quite regular, actually. We do some announce and some unannounced. Just to make sure people are vigilant. You know, and uh, Good. we'll be doing one at Frontier and one at Sunderland in a few weeks. Okay. Great. Thanks, Chief. Okay. Mary, you're up. Hi, I'm Mary McClintock. I'm the chair of the planning board. Um, just thinking, I've been thinking forward, not so much what we did before, but what we did before. And one of the things was at um, annual town meeting, we passed the age restricted um, housing zoning bylaw. You know, there's been all this discussion about senior housing, but we need to get the zoning bylaws so they would allow it. So we did that. Um, and we just heard fairly recently from the attorney general's office, you know, but we pass bylaws and then I have to go to the attorney general's <coughs> office make sure they all, you know, all the teeth are in the right place and those are in the right place and everything. And so there were a few tweaks um, to that from May, but they're all now. So we now have, so if you want to, if you really want some exciting reading, um, go to the town website. The zoning bylaws as of May are now up on the, um, on the town website. Um, I put a little piece of paper over on the table over here. That's where one of the things we're doing right now is a survey. We have um, assistance from FERCOG to look at um, economic issues, but business development in Conway and wanted to know from residents and visitors and business owners, um, where do people shop now? What businesses could be successful in Conway and what kinds of businesses are already in Conway? So we're actively trying to get people to fill out surveys right now. Um, that's due on October 18th. So there's a little information slip you can take. There's an online way to do it. It's pretty easy and quick. There are also print ones at the town office and the town and the library. I understand. Mm -hmm. And right here. Um, and that will help us um, look at, you know, are, is there anything we can do to increase economic activity in town and thinking economic activity in a broad way, not just like brick and mortar stores in particular place. Um, the thing that's coming up for us with the special town meeting at the end of the month is um, we're working on a temporary moratorium on commercial recreation, rec commercial recreational marijuana establishments. Um, many syllables. This is um, in response to what happened with the state and when the state voted uh, last year in November to legalize recreational marijuana, there's the individual part where you can grow your own pot in the backyard and you can, you know, smoke your own pot in your yard. There's that part, but then there's the store part, the commercial part, stores, cafes, growing it on a commercial level, processing it on a commercial level. The state is, you probably read in the paper, is, is, has not figured out what the rules are yet. They've just revised the law. They have not figured out what the rules are for, you know, what, what does it mean to sell retail marijuana? What does it mean to process it or to cultivate it? So we're asking for a temporary moratorium in Conway saying that you can't open a commercial marijuana establishment in Conway until we have time to see what the state comes up with for rules and then we can look at, well, do we need any, is this, are the state rules enough or do we want to do anything in addition to that? So that, so it's a temporary moratorium, not a ban on commercial marijuana establishments forever in Conway, but a short time to give us time to see what the state comes up with. Um, and then what people in town want. So we have a public hearing this Thursday and you will be the first ones in your community to get the handout before it passes these around. For this, um, for the public hearing to learn more about what we mean by a temporary moratorium and what Conway can regulate and what it can't regulate. So that, we're doing that. We've been putting a lot of energy into that. And Joe and I went to a presentation with somebody from the Attorney General's office. I really don't envy the people on the state level trying to sort this out. Um, a lot of questions. Um, then we're also just heard today that Shelburne, remember, remember back in February 2016 when we passed 
a um, large scale construction bylaw when the, the issue of whether the pipeline was going to come through or not, and we wanted to control in town. If somebody wants to come in and make do some kind of construction that impacts 50 acres or more, um, how can the town have an input, have the input special permit process? So to make sure that things like roads aren't messed up, um, what it, all the kinds of you know issues about noise, issues about construction on a really large scale. We're talking 50 acres, or more, not not a small scale. So um, we passed that bylaw. The attorney general decided that it really should have been a zoning bylaw instead of a general bylaw. We had um, done it as a general bylaw at the recommendation of the <laughs> regional planning board. Um, so now we don't, that bylaw doesn't exist in Conway because it wasn't, it was a general bylaw, not a zoning bylaw. So we're waiting to see what happens with Shelburne because Shelburne has taken a very similar bylaw, passed it as a zoning bylaw. It is being reviewed right now by the Attorney General. And Joe just emailed me this afternoon that it's been post, that the Attorney General asked for another month for review. It's already gone past their usual review time. I'm not sure, perhaps because it's complex or why it's taking that long. But we're waiting to see what happens with Shelburne's bylaw, and then we're going to revisit that and look at what we passed before, look at what Shelburne did, and say, do we need to, you know, and that would, like all bylaws, it would go through a probably public information and a public hearing process to see. Um, FERCRAG has the funding to work with Asheville and Conway on the South River corridor mapping and looking at issues of um, particularly of flooding and this great word fluvial erosion. Everybody say fluvial erosion. You have to like get your like handkerchief out because fluvial is anyway. It sounds like you're sneezing. Um, that's about erosion related to flooding on the river. So we're going to meet with Kimberly McPhee from FERCOD on October 19th to talk about that. And today, actually, just uh, got some information from UMass about the, you might have seen in the paper, the whole thing about um, culvert size and stream crossings um, in relation to flooding. And so there's, and I understand from Tom that, you know, that, that the select board's working with FERCOD also on um, sort of preparedness in terms of thinking about if we get, you know, hopefully we'll never be like Houston and get 50 inches of rain in, in a week, but if we get something like a Hurricane Irene level of rain, how are our bridge, stream crossings and culverts and bridges able to do that? So we're, um, we're looking at, we'll be talking with Furcog about that. I bet that we're not the only board that's looking for associate members or other folks to join us. We have a full five-member board at this point, although one of our uh, board members, Andy Jaffe, is playing music in Taiwan for the fall. Sorry for, for uh, us. Glad for him. Um, but we would love to get um, associate members, people to come in who are not voting members, to start learning the process. As like with many of our boards and committees, there's a body of knowledge you have to have about things like zoning bylaws and whatever. I'm trying to like attach some kind of like device <laughs> to Joe's brain and like it hasn't worked really quite yet. But if you see some kind of mind melt thing going on, that's <coughs> We, we are, um, the planning board has representatives on a number of boards and committees, including the Franklin County Planning Board, Conway Community Preservation Committee, Mohawk Trail Woodland Partnership Project, and the Sewer Rats. Thank you, Mary. On, on the, uh, the more, the um, marijuana issue, mm -hmm. at that um, presentation that was given by Margaret Hurley at FERCOG, right. you were there, Joe was there, Tom was there, I was there. Bob was there. Right, that's right. A bunch of us were there. And you could tell that she was not happy giving that presentation <laughs> because she couldn't answer a lot of the questions. Okay. And everybody left with more questions than, than they had answers. Uh, the other night, we had a presentation at the um, Franklin County Selectments Association. Very good presentation. One of the presenters was uh, on the Cannabis Control Commission. She came to talk to us, and um, it, it's obvious that they have a lot of work to do. Uh, at the MMA board, each month we get an update on what's happening with the marijuana law, on what, what regulations are being put in place. And it's obvious that it's a big mess at the state level, and it's going to be, you know, they're supposed to have 
regulations out by April 1. Uh, yeah. And then we're going to make it. Mm -hmm. it's, right, it's, and businesses can start on June 1 or July 1, something right. like that. Mm -hmm. June 1. Yeah. So that's it, why we're asking for a moratorium. It's, to, it's to slow the process down and get because if once they figure it out, then we want to look at it and review it and say, well, does this work for Conway? And and I'm totally curious. Please spread the word about the public hearing on Thursday. I'm completely curious to see if people come, what their concerns or interests are. And the big message: this has nothing to do with individual use. This is not about individual use. It's about business. That's right. Now, one thing to keep an eye on is now that the state is talking. It was all over the globe today is the state's talking about you don't want a dispensary fine. You don't get any of the state money that comes from this. So that's something we definitely need to keep an eye on. Because you're talking Maybe. millions of dollars here. What? Maybe. Maybe. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, for, the medical. that's for medical marijuana, correct? No. No. Oh, for this is a... If you you put in a moratorium, we don't get any of the no, state ban. funds. A full-time ban. That's a ban. Okay, there's a, a difference. That's a no, they said moratorium in today's paper. I'm just well, but you said full time as well, and this is temporary. No, yes, I did not say full time. Oh, I'm okay. sorry, I misheard. All right, well, so that's something I'll look into between now and Thursday's meeting. But what we're but it's just something is, to keep an eye on. That's our all plan I'm is a temporary moratorium to give us time to look at the rules, not a ban. There are some towns that are both trying to vote bans. We're not looking many, at many many towns are trying to we're vote bans. Yeah. All of Franklin County voted in favor of the marijuana, so we're in that group of. You know, we, we're all in favor of it, apparently. And so we're under a different set of rules in the towns that voted against it. In, in terms of our process. As, as far as the process. Yeah. Yeah. I, John, can you confirm? I heard they were going to allow an artisan uh, cooperative, cooperative type of artisan group to do marijuana. Have you heard any about yes. that? There are all kinds of proposals yeah. out there. You know, dealing with not only the retail dealing. side, but the cultivation side. The, they have no rules right now. Do you mean artisanal? Archer, that's the right word? Yeah. I, think, I think that's the word you want. They have, is that by design that they have, that nothing's coming out of them, though, that they're, they're chaotic? Meaning, are they deliberately stonewalling this because of the makeup of the commission? I, I, I don't think so. I, I think what's happening is it's just a very complicated process and situation that they find themselves in now that the law has been passed to set up the regulations to do this properly and so that they can get some tax money. See, they've gone out to all the states with the property passed this and they had got marijuana and stuff like that growing and they, they're, they're telling up all their information with these other states as well problems they've had with it, how that Massachusetts could possibly overcome some of their problems by setting certain legislation up. So they're just in the, they're in the process of putting this all together. I wouldn't want their jobs. No way. Well, Lori, there's also a drop dead date in July. Yeah. If, if no yeah. laws are in place by July, then well, these people can no, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. They're start. supposed so, to have regulations in place This by has a great discussion for the public right. hearing. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> applications. Yeah. And <laughs> after April 1, you can do applications that will be supposedly approved by June 1. So, okay. could, could I just ask our uh, agricultural commission guy if he can clarify the this, this status? Uh, I believe the artisanal uh, stuff made it into the law, so it's waiting to have regulations written about it. For, to, for small farmers to be able to, to grow? I'm not actually sure if that's something I guess I should, should learn about. It's coming that, they, they addressed that the other night, uh -huh. that, that um, you know, it's not just for bigger organizations, but for small farmers. Sure. And again, they're just struggling with putting regulations out that will be fair mm -hmm. to everybody. Right. And, you know, this is going to be quite a task if they can get this done by April 1. And, and one piece of information that's part of the complication of it is that the marijuana business is a hundred percent cash business because it's they can't use fed banks that are right. federally banks. insured because it's against federal law. So the security issues related to so you know this has been a boon I think for the um, armored car services because they have to like drive up with a whole bunch of cash and then drive out with a bunch of marijuana and drive up with a bunch of cash. Um, so 
that adds to the complexity of that it's different than regulating another business that works through their usual banking system. Well, yeah. one of the things that everybody was worried about was it meant more pressure on the police in the first time. Absolutely. I right. mean, yes. That's one of the things that we would, as a town, I mean, if we had <laughs> double or triple. That's tax. right. Yeah. That's why there's a 20 percent tax on it. Can, can yes. I just say something just in case? Because I, I, I'll, I'll be at this meeting. From, Good. from a finance committee point of view, okay, and as it relates to, for example, the sewer project, these businesses, we're talking really two, well, you're talking, you're talking the, so the cafes, you're talking medical marijuana dispensaries and recreational, and I don't, know, I don't know enough to know whether the medical and the commercial together, but what I want to say is this, that there's so much potential from the point of view of the ancillary businesses that can be that can come around them that in my thinking they may even be able to pay for the darn sewer system downtown so so we're making a connection here between the sewer rats and marijuana <laughs> In the senior house. Yeah, <laughs> in, 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 uh, I think it was in Forbes a couple of days ago. Yeah. There was an article about in towns where they have these dispensaries. Twinkie the, sales have doubled. What, and, <laughs> and we're also talking about major increases in uh, places like Domino, but food in purchasing oh, of surprise, surprise food. Surprise. Okay, so and and you think about possibly some a venue for some music or whatever, you could get something going down here. And yes, you have to pay some more money for police, but you're going to have revenue to build that. Sewer system. So, okay, okay, I think we're getting a little off track here. Okay, thank you, Mary. Malcolm, what do you have for us? Well, not good news, I guess. But I got news. You have news. Okay. Well, some of the things that the assessors have done in the past year, we've done many site visits uh, and inspections, and anybody applies for a rebate, we certainly have to go out and inspect the property and see why they think they're paying too much taxes. Uh, one thing is certain, the tax rate is going to be this year, there's no new growth. I hear all these building permits, but they're the rinky-dinky, don't amount to nothing as far as tax base is concerned. And the other thing is certain, the tax base is everybody's got their land in chapter. And that, we don't have any tax base because of that. Yeah. And uh, I, I test that. 100% because 90% 90, 90 of the land that they put in chapter throws up to be nothing but brush. It's not helping the farmer, it's helping the homeowner who can afford the taxes, not pay his taxes. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. well, <laughs> if, if you've got a guilty conscience, probably is, well, that's why I'm looking at you. And one reason that the tax rate hasn't been set yet is because of the new method of taxing people. You all, if you own more than one piece of property around other than your house lot, you're going to get a tax bill for it. Mm -hmm. Valuation will be, stay the same, but it's going to be a lot of paper. Mm -hmm. So maybe somebody like you, you might get four or five bills. I only have one piece of land. Okay, it's all on one side of the road. No. Well, you're going to get two bills. Then. <laughs> so yeah, you're going to get two bills. Build 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 like but, but it's, build. it's being built on a per parcel basis. Per parcel right. basis. Yeah. Per so, okay. Instead of a deed, it's being built on parcels, okay? And if it's on the other side of the road, you're going to get another bill for sure. So the bill that was including everything should go down yes. to be offset by the right across the road. Well, the total bill will be the same. Total bill yeah. will be the total same. Total valuation will be the same. It just makes a lot more paper. So this will work for you. Well, <laughs> it depends by the state, if you all know. More than ninety percent of the stuff we do is dictated by the state. Yeah. Or say the tornadoes, you know, I think a lot of people that had tornado damage didn't get a fair shake because we could not rebate them if the damage was not less than fifty percent of the total valuation of the property. Mm -hmm. And Mags is a good example of that. That barn was not valued at more than fifty percent of his total valuation. So he got no rebate at all. And that's the state. Don't don't go 
firing bullets at me because I didn't set the rules. Okay, any other questions? Thank you, Malcolm. God, I'm going to go home. Hey, Malcolm, is a taser okay? Is what? Sue? <laughs> 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 no, no, I'm, I'm just with energy. <laughs> You're with energy, of course. Yep. <laughs> Mark? Um, the Zoning Board of Appeals has had, for a while, we had only one member, me. And then John, John joined us a couple years ago, and so it was just John and me. And then this year we got a third. So in terms of beating the still grass for more, more members, um, it's been hard for a lot of committees, but at least we have a reasonable number now by having three, even though it's uh, in the bylaws they're supposed to have five. And what have we had, two cases this year? We've had, no, one. <laughs> Oh, we yeah, had couple, one last year. Yes, it's, I mean, when I was conscripted originally by the, um, that there are, there are very few cases that come, come to us and just live up to that, which is fortunate for John, who has so many things on his plate. Um, but that's really the big news is having a third member, really. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Mark. Jason, what do you got for us? So let's see. Um, the Ag Commission, we spent most of fiscal year 2017 working on the right to farm proposal. We had an, op a, um, an open forum, worked on a few drafts, got some feedback from the community, brought it to town meeting, and got it passed. So that was a couple of years in the making through uh, trials and tribulations of getting the ag comp booted back up again and having a little grip revolving door members for a little while. So now, I kind of feel like the world's our oyster a little bit. Um, we're working on getting some signs to hopefully put up on the major entrances of town, declaring it's a right of town, a uh, right of right to farm community. Um, we're working on potentially trying to identify the major and even minor agriculture happening in town. To sort of, you know, there's other towns that have booklets um, and pamphlets, sort of showcasing agriculture in their towns, and we thought that could be something kind of like could benefit from. Um, Another potential that was brought to us um, by Tom was the idea of looking at land use history in town and see, you know, what different parcels are being farmed currently as and how they've been farmed in the past. Um, but you know, in general, just trying to be proponents of agriculture, and um, we currently have three members. It's up to a five-member commission. So once again, if there's anybody that's interested in joining, we've got two farmers and one non-farmer. So if we're not we're not choosy. If you've got an interest in ag, we'd love to have you. Thank you, Jason. Tom has a statement from the uh, Cultural Council. And uh, a few words of my own. Uh, yeah, uh, Erica Wirtz and Polly Byers could not make it uh, tonight, but they wrote, in 2016, the Conway Cultural Council had 29 applicants who requested a total of $12,365. We funded 22 of those applicants with our available budget of $6,311. An impactful development in 2016 was that Massachusetts local cultural councils moved to electronic applications. This has been a huge improvement for the review process. Going paperless has saved both resources and time. Our goal of encouraging grant submissions that benefit Conway residents more directly has paid off. We are indeed getting more of these proposals. However, many folks are unaware that there are funds available to apply for, so we still need to spread the word further. Ideas are currently on the table for a 2018 Cultural Council informational town event along the lines of what we did in 2014 with the goal of attracting a larger audience. Thank you, Tom. That's from the Cultural Council. Just you have some comments. Just a few notes from uh, the town administrator's office before I think the select board will wrap up with any final comments. Uh, I'm still dealing with the tornado, as are many people in town. The Fournier property behind the school um, is about ready to start the front part of it getting cleaned up. Um, it's taken a long time. It's very hard to get loggers to do this kind of work, and we may have somebody now finally who's able to do that. Beyond that, there are more trees in the back of the parcel that are going to be much more difficult to take care of because of the environmental restrictions. Uh, so that'll be a phase two for us somewhere down the line. Uh, mentioning uh, something John, John uh, spoke of earlier, uh, one of the major 
things we did uh, recently was the community compact, both the informational technology part of that, which was a series of best practices we worked on with the FERCOG, which is going to be used as a model for small towns around the state, and also the long-term financial plan, which, uh, which Dana mentioned as well. Uh, that we're going to have a final version of that, I hope, within a week or two. I've been hoping that for about a month now. And uh, that, I think, is really going to be a great tool for Conway to be able to understand its finances and what is happening to them over time. So it, it should, be a, should be a fantastic addition to the town's um, self-awareness and financial planning. Um, we uh, got a grant for an Americans with Disabilities Act self-evaluation and transition plan that uh, too is almost done and one of the things we're asking for on the town meeting warrant is a the town's 40 percent match for a grant that would allow us to do fifteen thousand dollars of the twenty five thousand they identified to help make the town more accessible that does not include the lift that they suggested for this building uh, but aside from that uh, we would be more than half done with the with the repair if that goes through. Um, I do have an apology to make to everyone in the town, and that is that I did not include in the warrant for the annual town meeting the debt service for the fire truck. I had mistakenly thought that we had an extra year before we had to pay that, and we don't. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask that that come from free cash as well. That's a pretty hefty chunk, $35,000 for the debt. This is a five-year debt service. Um, and I apologize for not getting that under your tax rate this year. Um, but uh, it is going to have to come from somewhere, and I'm afraid that is uh, free cash. Um, uh, one more thing. Um, uh, Jason did mention that I was interested in working uh, uh, with the Ag Commission on, on getting uh, some of the agricultural information about town onto the town's GIS system. I'm also uh, going to be meeting tomorrow morning with the fellow who does our uh, assessor's GIS program in here and Lee to see if we can come, come up with some ideas that would really break our system out of the general mold and do some very interesting things. Uh, there's a grant that may be available for that. It's a very tight turnaround. Um, I think mid-November we have to have it in by, but uh, that's also under the Community Compact, a different program under the Community Compact than, than the other ones we got. Um, but I'm uh, very excited about the, the mapping capabilities and how that can add to the community's understanding of itself. So those are some of the things I've been working on and hope to be working on in the near future. Thank you, Tom. Bob, you want to put your chief's hat on? Sure. Uh, this past year, we did a lot of training on river rescues. Uh, we purchased a boat and everything. Because last, not this, some past summer, but summer before, we had four or five rescues on the Diffa River. And we figured that this year would be just as busy as not busier. You know, it turned around that we didn't have one call this year on the river, which is very fortunate for the hundreds of people a day that were down there swimming and acting up. But, uh, so we're still training on river rescue. We're spending a lot of time training on the new fire truck. We do great results of that. So we do have a uh, new foam system on it that the guys uh, the girls are learning about. Also, uh, and we're going to start doing some training on uh, uh, railroad or trains train derailments and things like that to make it safe for our own people. We have to go into things like that. The, the uh, Pan Am has a very good program out there and we're hoping to get the guy to come to Conway and uh, present this program for us because a lot of people in this town don't know it, but we got about three miles of railroad to Conway, three to four miles. And uh, it has, they have piled up on it before. I mean, a lot of you probably don't know that, but they have derailed in Conway before. Uh, so uh, it's an issue that we have to deal with, and uh, uh, we're always looking for members. We're down to about 24 members right now. Uh, we had eight juniors, but we now only have six because two of them just 
advanced up to the regular fire level that when he turned 18. Um, we have two of the firefighters. They're in the process right now of becoming EMTs, which is a great thing. Help the ambulance service out. Um, they're just going to take their state exams. I guess their classes are all done. And uh, so that would be very helpful to the ambulance service. Because they are down drastically hurting for EMTs. And that's a... In fact, uh, this past year we've had a few calls where the fire department had to assist them in uh, extrication and uh, we tried to get them to assist us in a child threatening to jump off a second story roof in Conway, which is something new to us. Uh, but they were out of, they were tied up in another call, so we had to get another town to help us do that. But, uh, it was quite an experience there. And, my men never thought they'd have to get up on ladders and get up on the second story roof and literally capture this child to get him off the roof and without him hurting himself. And uh, so you, you, you know, times are changing and uh, you've got to make yourself aware that uh, you can keep up with most of this stuff and that's what we're trying to do. Thank you, Chief. Uh, certainly what the select board does every year um, is try to maintain uh, our compliance with the laws of the Commonwealth, uh, make sure that our tax dollars are, are producing the most benefit for our residents, making sure we're taking care of items that uh, are, are both for the public safety and the welfare of our <laughs> residents. And you know this is and, and this goes from the major items all the way down to the minor items. Uh, it's something that the board works very hard on. Uh, Tom helps us tremendously with that, and so does Lisa. And uh, it, it's just a continual uh, uh, process of trying to make sure all these things fall into place so that we benefit, again, the, the residents to the best that we can. Um, Bob, do you have any comments? Sure. Uh, broadband Committee. Um, a few of, a few of you out there are probably paying close attention to how the Comcast extension is going. Uh, Comcast is extending their network to all except a very small number of homes in Conway. And there are homes of people here who are not going to get connected. But, uh, almost everyone in town will finally be connected. Um, within about two days, I'll have a new list of the new roads that Verizon has released. Uh, if you want to see what's going on, drive down the Waitley Road. You will see Comcast Cable going all the way now to Roaring Brook Road. Drive up Roaring Brook Road, the whole length of Roaring Brook Road, well, coming in from each end anyway. Now we'll have, we'll have Cable, uh, Old Cricket Hill, uh, uh, Cricket Hill. Uh, you will see all the cable that's been strung there. So. It hasn't been turned on yet, but it's very close. Uh, there are the folks in the southern part of Conway, the Williamsburg end, that have not seen a lot of activity down there, and they don't believe a word of what I'm telling you. But the state and Comcast both assure me that it's going to get done. So it's every home in Conway, except for a few, I've notified the people who are not going to get it. Uh, Thank you, Bob. I'm sorry I didn't recognize you as chairman of the Broadband Committee, <laughs> but Bob has done tremendous work with Comcast and the state to make this happen. We are we are going to be 99% wired, which yeah. is which is unheard of. Okay, uh, he's done a great job. Now put on your selectman's hat. Do you have any comments? Uh, I'm the new guy, so so uh, so. Uh, I was sitting here wondering whether you'd forget the broadband committee like last year. So yeah. <laughs> I was anticipating it. Um, uh, but one of, the, one of the things I can certainly say, I go to, we all go to a lot of meetings. You guys all go to a lot of meetings. We all go to a lot of meetings. And Conway is the model for a great many towns. Towns talk about Conway with great reverence compared to and you know and most people will say well I hate all of the elementary schools but my elementary school is great but people talk about the Conway way the way the town of Conway runs compared to their town as being exemplary 
and I give a lot of that to Bob and John, I give a lot of that to Tom, and I give most of it to all of you guys. You know, nobody has got committees like Conway. And so we all, we all worry about the fact that there's, we don't have enough volunteers and our committees are running short, and, but not like in the other towns. I, I got one like, thing to say about your Comcast uh, endeavors. It will help the tax rate. Uh, yes, it will. Uh, <laughs> people will be able to sell their homes. Yes. Yeah. We'll be able to get some money from them, too. <laughs> and, and, and they'll pay us more money. Yes, Home will. sales are moving in Conway. Yeah. Bob, you have any comments? No, other than uh, talking about volunteering uh, different committees. Uh, we've had discussions tonight with other committees about not bailing like, quorum for quorums and stuff like that. And you all do great work. You're all volunteering, like most everybody in this town. And uh, if you can think of anybody else to, <laughs> like to bring on board, good luck. Because there's a general rule, and you can read it in other towns and see it on the news. Committees are shrinking in sizes. Because the new younger generations do not want to commit like the older ones do. Uh, one, one more comment that, that uh, Bob reminded me of. Uh, I've actually gotten comments from uh, residents in other towns who watch our select board meetings and say they like to watch our select board meetings. <laughs> and I can't for the life of me understand that. Uh, but but I, I've, I've gotten, I, I don't know, six or eight comments over the last year or so that they like to watch our select board Maybe they're insomniacs. I, no, no, believe me. I, I don't know what the reason is. I don't know. So I, you know, I don't know what to attribute that to. But it's it's strange. It up. very strange. Thanks. And it's a video recording. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank